It's the Syracuse Orange next on ESPN3. watching the ACC on ESPN. For the first time this year, the Orange are inside their beloved Carrier Dome. The setting for this New York State showdown, the Seahawks of Wagner soar in from Staten Island to take on the Orange of Syracuse. Hi everybody, Sean Kinney alongside former North Carolina head coach John Bunny. Welcome to week three of the college football season. No doubt about it, it has been a rough start for Syracuse. Back-to-back -back losses to Penn State and Northwestern. Yet first-year coach Scott Schaefer says don't panic, simply stay the course. Yeah, he, he may say that, but what he really wants to see is a lot of improvement today. Close loss at Penn State, overwhelmed at Northwestern. Many, many mistakes on both sides of the ball. It won't be easy. Wagner is the defending Northeast Conference champs. They were an FCS quarterfinalist a year ago, and they have their main weapon back in running back Dominique Williams. Yeah, three times a captain. This guy must carry the load for Wagner. He's rushed for two, 100 yards 20 different times. He may not bust the big one today, but he is going to bust up a lot of tacklers. The turnover bug really bit Syracuse hard last week in their loss to Northwestern, in particular four Drew Allen interceptions. The question becomes moving forward, how does Allen regain confidence and more importantly establish an identity for this orange offense? Well, this is his third career start. And, and last week, the good news is he passed for 66% completions. The bad news is he had four picks, 275 mind, yards, mind you, but this week he needs to get better. He knows it and the coaches have to help him. These two schools have never met the first meeting. Syracuse has always had good luck against the FCS. A perfect 10-0 here at the Carrier Dome. They'll try to get back on course when we come back. The Orange making their season debut here inside the Carrier Dome just moments ago, taking the field. Syracuse and Wagner. Let's now meet our third partner in today's broadcast, Cat Whitehill. Thanks, John. Yes, Coach Walt Hot Hamline is not only the head coach, but he's also the director of athletics at Wagner College. The amazing thing about his career is that at age 29, he was head coach. And later that year, at age 30, they named him the AD. His longevity needs no introduction, as he's had many National Coach of the Year honors. Uh, <laughs> but it's just amazing what he has done for Wagner College from 1981 until now. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much, Tad. And he is Wagner football, sixth winningest coach in the FCS level. As we will get our first look at the Tremendous kicker for the Seahawks, David Lopez. Syracuse will get the football first inside the Carrier Dome. A ramped up crowd ready to go. The Orange looking for their elusive first win. A chance to get Scott Schaefer the taste of victory for the first time. And we are underway from Syracuse. Great to have you with us here on ESPN3. This will be Morris the third trying to give it a shot coming out of the end zone and he is cut down shy of the 20-yard line. Special teams coverage by Lloyd Smith. Great coverage by the Seahawks. If that kickoff is any indication of what they intend to do, that was terrific. They were way down there. Drew Allen making his third start. The fifth-year senior transfer from Oklahoma. You see the, the one number that jumps out. The six interceptions, that is highest of the FBS. He has got to clean that up and an opportunity today to try to do that. They open up from the shotgun, safe pass and a catch and a tackle immediately there. Ashton Broyle with the catch, but he was brought down in his tracks by Jarrett Jadone. As we take a look at the Syracuse starters, Jerome Smith, it is a must to try to get him going early and often. Up front, it's an experienced left side led by the Remington Award watch list center, Mackie McPherson. And this is Smith over the right side, tough going. He gets one, maybe two. Max Wassall, the middle linebacker, hit on the stop. You see the up-tempo style for Syracuse, no huddle. 
Looking at a third and ten. These are the types of situations that Schaefer wanted to get away from. Allen's going to test out his arm, looking for West. Good coverage as he overshot him. Coverage by Jarrett Jadone. So a quick three and out for the Syracuse offense. And this Wagner defense shining early in this game. And it's an experienced front four. We'll really see eight guys rotate. Linebacking core, inexperienced. Wassel and Howell, both first-year starters. And Jarrett Jadone, he's the leader in the secondary at the cornerback position. James Howell awaiting the kick from Riley Dixon. Dixon took the starting job away from Jonathan Fisher last week. End over end kick that bounces by Howell. He'll let it trickle inside the 20 all the way down to the 15 yard line. There's that Carrier Dome home field bounce on Dixon's first punt inside his home facility. He pins Wagner inside their 20 as we get a look at Matt Misley, first year starter, and you talk about big shoes to fill. In there for the graduated Nick Dosher, who really did everything offensively for the Seahawks. Misley, a little bit different style of quarterback. Absolutely. He's probably not quite the runner, not quite the passer. It certainly doesn't have the experience that the quarterback did last year. From the 14-yard line, Misley on a float out right, throws underneath, pass is caught, keeping his balance and falling ahead past the 20. Up ahead to the 21-yard line is Dominique Williams, and Williams is the go-to guy. Number four all-time rusher in Wagner history. Green, Watkins, and Carrington are the receiving core. Watkins is the transfer out of Duke. Up front, the leader is David Fredrickson. He's an all-NEC performer. Third-year starter making his 25th consecutive start today. Dominic Williams making his presence known early. He just bounced right off that tackler. They pick up six on first down. Williams on the zone read, and they drop the football, and Syracuse jumps on top of it. The game's first turnover, and it's the Orange coming up with it, Dyshawn Davis. This is where they want to see things get turned around as well. The turnover part of Syracuse football. Get some more, a big area of targeting this past week. Bad exchange between quarterback and running back on this read option type game that they run. Unsure there with the handoff, Sean. So an early killer for Wagner. You just cannot have those types of mistakes on the road in an environment like this. Allen looking for blood in the end zone, tipped away at the last second. Blake Bascom got a hand up just in time. They were looking for West. Right after the turnover, they try to go right up on top. It's a wheel route to West. And he's got a linebacker covered him. Tremendous coverage and able to get his head turned back. And, pop and push the ball away. They go with the inverted bone and they will hand it off. This is breaking carries George Morris the third, the red shirt freshman, and he is jumped on by a host of Seahawks. Penetration all over the place. Lawrence Williams was the first one to blow it up. Let me just say this. These Seahawks are excited about being here in Syracuse now. This is not the same team I watched on tape last week. They are fired up. Prince Tyson goalie is checked in. He's their third down back. Plenty of time. Allen zips it over the middle. Some contact, but no flag. And John, I'm not surprised Allen has thrown the ball four times. Three of his targets have been the junior Jaron West. It, that's what they said they needed to get, get the ball in his hands. Obviously, that's what the, the game plan is. And right now, it's not paying off. Now Syracuse will send out a new kicker. It is Ryan Norton, Ross Krautman, one of the all-time greats in Syracuse history, not available today. So this will be Norton's first career field goal attempt. He has handled kickoff duties the past year and a half. Kick on the way, has enough leg, and Norton's one for one in his young career. The Orange get three off the early mistake by Wagner. Syracuse with the early lead. Walt Hamline dodges an early bullet. Syracuse by three. Let's go back to that third down incompletion. 
You look from behind here, there is absolutely no pressure on the quarterback. Red zone coverage, they got two defenders undercutting it over top of the receiver West. You can't throw the ball in there. That's the one problem I see in Allen right now is he telegraphs his throws. He's got to start looking one way and throw another. Syracuse settles for a 33-yard field goal from Ryan Norton. Matthias McKinnon awaiting the kick. 3-0 Orange on top. This will be McKinnon from the 10. And he is tripped up as he crossed the 16-yard line. Special teams coverage by Julian Wiggum, the backup corner. Let's take a look at the Syracuse defense up front. Kroom and Bromley, those two move bodies. Welsh was the ACC Defensive Player of the Week in the opener against Penn State. The linebacking core, really the strength of this unit with Marquis Spruill and Deshaun Davis. And then in the secondary, Eskridge leads the team in tackles. Anderson and Lynn, the two corners. Wagner opens up from the 17-yard line. They fake the handoff, quick throw out to the flats. Pass caught, but tackled immediately. There's Dyshawn Davis, able to bring down Ralph Green, who's listed as one of the H-backs for Wagner. The three-by-one formation of Wagner this was a problem at Northwestern last week. They had a hard time getting lined it up in responding to those quick throws to the perimeter. Much better already to start this game. They put Green in motion. It's a keeper as Misley scrapes ahead past the 20 up to the 22 yard line. Robert Welsh. A redshirt junior out of Bayshore in on the stop. This is what Wagner does. They're no huddle. They get on the line. They slow it down unless they have an incomplete pass. They took a look. They run the inside zone or they run the misdirection plays with the quarterback read, which they just did on that pass play. Picking up five yards. You hear the noise inside the carrier dome. Williams in motion, quick slant, and it's dropped. In and out of the hands of Anthony Carrington. That's a ball that the leader must catch, the junior out of Toms River, New Jersey. I always talk about catching in your hands. He tries to, maybe even a little, a little bit too close to your body. Great pass, should be caught, should be a first down. Matt Misley, the only quarterback slash punter at the FCS level. On to boot this one away, and oh, what a kick. Richie Dazier fields back at the 28. Dazier picks up a block at the 40, and then he is spun down at the 41-yard line. It's a 13-yard return. Drew Allen in the orange. The offense back onto the field when we come back. 3-0 Syracuse. Syracuse out to an early 3-0 lead. Not the type of start throwing the football for Drew Allen. Let's swing it down to the sideline with Cat Whitehill. Yeah, guys, I was watching Drew Allen's body language on the bench, and he was very frustrated, asking his receivers, where were you supposed to go? Were you supposed to go inside? Were you supposed to go outside? He just didn't look very happy with what was happening. So this is a very key drive for Syracuse and Drew Allen. Another swing pass out to Ashton Broyle, the screen, and... You know, John, you've dealt with quarterbacks coming in. Obviously, Allen, there's going to be some cobwebs. He hasn't started a game for four years prior to this season Absolutely. for Syracuse. Absolutely. You know, last time he started a game before the season was high school. Five years. Takes a while to shake those cobwebs. But everybody's talking about body language these days following that Thursday night game with the Patriots. He's got to demonstrate some poise today third down they swing it to the flats tyson goalie tackled in his tackle. tracks what a play made by the wagner defense trevor loveland the junior 11 tackles on the season and it's another three and out for coach schaefer in the orange yeah look here this is a great open field wrap your ankles together and tackle that's how you tackle in the open field 
using the boundary as the 12th man, closing in, running your feet, never throwing too early, and wrapping your arms. Wrap the ankles together. Beautiful. Brian Norton on the punt for the second time. Line drive angled toward the far side. Will hop skip out of bounds around the 23-yard line. So, Coach, here we are a little more than five minutes into this first quarter, and I think the, the thing that jumps out at me right now is the Wagner defense. They really are playing fast. They're playing really hard. But I also know what Scott Schaefer wants and his staff. They, they want to begin this game being alert, attention to detail, play fast, and make things happen. The opposite of that is playing sloppy. I don't see him playing sloppy, but what I haven't seen in their pass attack, both on tape and in the Penn State game, which I watched, is vertical passing. It's all horizontal. So after the 35-yard punt by Dixon, here's Misley and the Seahawks trying to get something started offensively, and that's usually a pretty good source to go to in Dominique Williams. It's funny on the conference call, the offensive coordinator for Walt Tamline, he's talking to us on the phone. Thomas Sully says, hey, if we're not giving it to him, we're faking it to him. That's their bread and butter guy, Dominic Weaves, three times a captain. That's just simply amazing. First time ever in the long history of Wagner football. They said ideally they'd like to get him 25 carries a game. He had 32 in the opening week win against Georgetown right at 25 last week in the loss to Merriman. Misley hit as he throws. They're going to say, let's see if that's a live football. No indication yet by the official. The hit put on by Jay Bromley, and they're going to say that was a live football as Misley paid the price. That's the call on the field. It's going to be hard to overturn. Let's take a look. He has got to get the ball out of his hands. That's running the wrong direction. And I got to believe they're going to take a second look at this one. And as you mentioned, coach, the ruling on the field is a fumble. So we'll take a couple more looks at this. And was Matt Misley's arms going forward there? Initially, I thought so. Initially, I thought so. But he's retreating. You gotta step up, get rid of the ball. You don't have any extra blockers in there. You got five guys out there on the line of scrimmage lined up going up for a pass. George Burton is in the replay booth doing the, the replay for the ACC officials. He's an old friend of mine. He is a class guy and a real bright guy. I don't think he's gonna have a hard time with this one. Now, it's if the, the call stands, give some heads up. Kudos to Matt McBride, the left tackle, for jumping on that loose football for Wagner. People don't like the hold up for replay, but it's really important to get it right as white as you possibly can. That is Jay Bromley. He has been a stout defensive tackle for them coming around on a stunt. He's already got three TFLs coming into this game. A night, nice tight game between he and the defensive end, Michael Robinson. Bromley was really excited to get this season going as he was playing hurt for the majority of last year as we get the call from David Epperly. The ball was fumbled, recovered by the offense, is a third down. So the ruling stands. Wagner maintains the football, but now they are on the shadow of their own goal. Back at the five-yard line, but Bromley... He was injured last year. He missed fall camp with an ankle, then hurt his other ankle and knee midway through the season. Just never felt he was at 100%, but he is a full go this year and has really taken on the leadership role up front for Syracuse. John Raymond has checked in on this third down call. It's a conservative call over the right side. 
And Wagner will send out the punting unit. So two three and outs and a fumble in their three offensive series in this first quarter. Precisely what we talked with Tom Masella, the OC. He has not helped the defense, and, and he was very honest, forthright about it. We need to do a better job to start games. Handling the football. Misley gets another terrific kick. This will be Dazier at his own 43. Marker comes in. Dazier across midfield. Finally escorted out of bounds at the 31, but there is a flag down around the area where Bazier called in that punt. I think this will come back, Sean. I'll say Illegal it again. Illegal block in the back. On the return team, number 10. 10 yard penalty from the front of the foul, first down. The greatest fear going into some of these games is the problem with players not being alert. You gotta stay on top of your best game. The block in the back by Kirkland. Syracuse will have it when we come back. Well, Scott Schaefer told us earlier this week that he was going to give a serious look to Terrell Hunt, the sophomore from Rosedale, New York, getting his first action. Drew Allen, three of six, minus a yard in his two offensive series. And they will go to the big bell horse in the backfield, Jerome Smith, as Smith pile drives up ahead near the 35-yard line. What Hunt brings to the offense is the threat of a quarterback run much better than Drew Allen. You saw the numbers by Hunt. That was on the final drive last week in the loss to Northwestern. He played the final five and a half minutes to 22 yards passing, but he also carried the ball three times for 30 yards, and that's the dimension he brings to the Syracuse offense. 15-yard run for a touchdown. There you see Allen now on the bench. The fifth-year senior transfer from Oklahoma. Third down, Hunt to put the ball in the air for the first time. As a pocket, throws underneath, and it is on the mark. First down at the 43-yard line. Called in by Jeremiah Covina. D'Angelo James with the coverage. Low and away from the defender. Good throw. That is the game's first first down. Here we are, 6-10 to go in the opening quarter. And look at Smith go, bouncing off with the tacklers. Smith takes it to the 40, finally drugged down by Navon Williams. Downhill running. Inside zone. It's drive defenders out and cut off the backside. Good design, great vision by the back. 19 yards, Smith. Up the middle, gets five more. Boy, he hits that hole hard, doesn't he? He is a load himself then. Almost 230 pounds back into that six-foot frame. Second down and five. Syracuse with a little rhythm. Uh, Smith again, look at all the white jerseys it takes to finally slow down his momentum. Forward progress should be close to the 32. James Howell, the outside linebacker, the first one to hit him. Got to believe this is four down territory with the injury to Krautman. Third and a long two. Hunt to throw. Steps, fires, caught. West with the catch down to the 19. 13 more yards for Jared West. Through a strike, Sean. Right at the sticks, in between zone defenders, right there. I thought that'd be really good today. Throw and catch, pitch and catch. But it's the wrong quarterback. That catch by West, now 17 straight games for the junior. He has a caught at least one ball. That's 13th on the all-time list here at Syracuse, and they've had some good receivers come through. It's a draw all the way for Terrell Hunt. He'll dive inside the 15, down to the 13-yard line. The dual threat at quarterback always changes the defense. 
Hunt was a guy who thought he had the starting job going into the spring, and then Drew Allen arrived on the scene. That kind of changed it. He was visibly frustrated, showed his frustrations to the coaches and players, but learned what he must do to take over that role, and now shining on his first series here against Wagner. He was a special teams player pretty much the first couple of years, sitting behind Brian Nassib. That's a good guy to sit behind yep. and watch. Very good player. New head coach, new offensive coordinator, a lot of things new around Syracuse. This is what they like to see. Third down. Hunt converted just a few moments ago. Throws to West, that same combination. And the Orange will have it first and goal. Covered by Najee Harris. He's got some sip on the ball now. Once again, West, looking for West. The short intermediate passes. The chain movers. Concern look for Walt Hamline. All of a sudden, Terrell Hunt has lit a fire with the Syracuse offense. First quarter clock approaching the three minute mark. We'll go with the I formation, bringing Cleveland as the extra blocking back. They pitch it to Jerome Smith, and he is tripped up. Knifing his way through that time was Blake Bascom, the free safety. He did a terrific job setting the edge, forcing the ball carrier inside quickly so the pursuit players can take advantage. I'm going to stick with the traditional three tight end look. Cleveland is the H back to the near side. He was just awarded the scholarship three weeks ago. He goes in motion for the second down play. Smith bouncing to the outside. Stiff arms. Touchdown, Syracuse. Impressive drive with the new quarterback, Terrell Hunt, being the engineer. I think I just heard the train whistle. Good bounce out by Jerome Smith. Showing some speed. That is his fourth touchdown already here in week three. Last season, amazingly, for the success he had running the football, he scored only three touchdowns all year. The kick by Norton, no good as he pushed it left as we go back to the touchdown run and Jerome Smith showing some bounce out speed. This is the power to run inside. He sees the defense collapse. He bounces out and has the speed to get to the pylon. That's impressive. That play is designed to go up inside. Terrell Hunt taking his orange offense, 12 plays, 68 yards, capped off by the three-yard touchdown run from Jerome Smith. And the part I liked about that for Syracuse, Hunt delivering a couple of strikes to West on third down to keep that drive alive. Absolutely pinpoint accurate. Threading the ball in between the zone defenders. We will see if the miss point after comes back to haunt the orange. That last drive eating up over four minutes off the game clock. 2.23 to go in this first quarter. Shallow kick near the five yard line on the return, Nevin Williams. Williams across the 20 up past the 25. So this Wagner offense has yet to muster a first down at if you're on that Wagner sideline right now, Coach John Bunning, you're Tom Masella, the offensive coordinator. What are you trying to dial up here and script to try to get some type of momentum, some type of rhythm built here in the first half? You've got to go with the girl that you brought to the dance. You've got to go with, with the Dominic Williams and the quarterback misdirect runs. I would stay away from the empty backfield sets that they got into where the quarterback retreated almost into the end zone. And it was lucky to get away. 
with an incomplete pass. See the call going against Syracuse and Tom Masella, the offensive coordinator, the Wagner, former Wagner D-back, 14 career interceptions. You see him upstairs. He is concerned right now. He was actually on Walt Hamline's first team. Absolutely. And a head coach four times. Fairfield, BU, Central Connecticut, Fordham. A lot of experience in the staff in that man alone. After the penalty, they will go to uh, Dom Williams, and he is hit hard. Zen Jones bringing him down low, one of the reserve down tackles. As you get a good look at Masella, you mentioned his years at Fairfield, Boston, Central Connecticut, and Fordham. Had a real good Fordham team in 2007. Last year, he had the luxury of a experienced quarterback in Nick Dosher. When they got Dosher, he was a 21-year-old freshman. He was drafted by the Kansas City Royals when that baseball path did not work out. He enlisted his services to Wagner, and were they ever happy to have him? What a career Dosher enjoyed. Williams chased down, nowhere to go. Keon Lynn, the corner, lending support. And we asked Masella earlier this week, what was the biggest difference between Dosher and Misley? And it was the running ability of Dosher. He was a triple option quarterback in high school. In high school, absolutely. And this young man's got run ability. He is athletic. He just doesn't have the experience in the feel yet of this offense. And here we go, empty backfield again. The ball has got to come out quick. Third and seven. Syracuse knows that. They're going to guard the chains. Whistle stops the play as they set up the screen. They were looking for Ralph Green, but I believe delay. Schaefer, play again. Yep, too much time. Offense. Delay. Five yard penalty. You, you wonder down. how that happens in a hurry of offense, but it happens. The Wagner coach has told us typically they like to operate at a little bit higher speed, but not the case today. The heavy underdog, 28 point underdog, they're not going to go at their normal flow. This is this is frustrating for Tom Masella up there in the box. Third and double digits, same play. Green makes the catch, nowhere to go. Blue jerseys all around. And Wagner with another three and out. Ron Thompson, Dyshawn Davis. What a quarter for Davis. A fumble recovery and already four tackles for the junior linebacker. What a difference a week makes. I know that it's a different opponent. Last week, Northwestern scored just about at will. But certainly the first drive, it looked like they were going on air. Hardly anybody in right in the right position to make plays. First quarter in the books, Syracuse with a 9-0 lead over Wagner. Terrell Hunt, the orange offense, anxious to get back onto the field. 9-0 Syracuse with the lead as we start quarter number two and a very busy Matt Misley on the punt. He averaged 49 yards his first two boots, but this one off the side of his foot still gets a favorable Seahawk roll. And it will come to rest at the 34-yard line. So let's go back to that last drive. Syracuse was 73 yards offense in the first quarter, 68 of them on this drive alone. Throwing the ball, pinpoint accuracy to short zones, downfield throws, and then, of course, the breakout by Jerome Smith. Drew Allen with the first three series. Hunt on that last scoring drive, three for three, 30 yards, capped off by the touchdown run from Jerome Smith. A real good start for Allen and company, so Hunt with a second straight series. Wanted short, goes deep. Floats it out, caught at the 25-yard line. It's Jared West. West with the catch. And the orange with a first down. I watched Hunt in pregame. He has a gun for an arm. He throws this up, one-on-one -on -one coverage down there. West with a big catch being 
closely guarded by the defender. 43 yards, now they get it to the speedster, Ashton Broyle. Double digit yardage, he's knocked out of bounds by Bascom. Got a flag. There is a marker down along the near side, so let's wait and see what the penalty is about. See Scott Schaefer all the way out onto the field. Holding on the offense, number 25, 10-yard penalty, first down. Jeremiah Cobina, one of the receivers out on that screen, the guilty party. Let's go back to the catch here by West. His third catch, 64 yards already in this first half. Really pretty doggone good coverage by James. He's got to get his head turned. Just a perfect throw and catch. Gunned it. West lines up as a receiver to the bottom of the screen. Hunt's looking his way. Throws instead to the flats. Caught. This is Tyson Goley. Touchdown. Hunt with the check down to Prince Tyson Goley. Watch the quarterback's head. He looks downfield the whole time and then chunks it out. The gully. Did a great job looking downfield first and then takes the swing pass out to Prince Tyson Gully. Norton, who missed his previous point after, nails this one. Prince Tyson Goley caught 33 balls from a year ago. His fourth catch of 2013 is a touchdown. 30 yards, Terrell Hunt, the orange, rolling here at the Dome. Prince Tyson Goley with his second touchdown of the year, and you talk about being all by your lonesome. Absolutely, but it's all, I think, with the quarterback knowing what route he's had called and seeing the defense deploy, looking downfield. It was a great, great throw because he looked downfield, looked the coverage off. Near the goal line for Wagner, Chris Andrews struggles ahead up near the 19-yard line. Take a look at the eyes of Terrell Hunt. Look at him looking downfield, and at the last moment, throws out to the swing pass. It's off to the races. Busted coverage by the Seahawks. In zone coverage so many times, players watch the quarterback's eyes and get fooled where they are located. Do you think some questions are getting answered as far oh as those goodness. quarterback <laughs> notches that we talked about Ooh, at the beginning? Man. Terrell Hunt, 6 of 6 for 104 yards and a touchdown. Misley on a keeper, just trying to get anything positive. He has tripped up at the line of scrimmage. Richard Anderson, the corner. This Wagner team, 12 plays now with that last keeper by Misley for a minus two yards. They've gone backwards. We know that. It, they've had a, a couple of plays that have been successful for them, but then they have a big negative play. Now that's a good four yard gain. That was off the misdirection, faking it to Williams, and the quarterback run with a blocker out in front of him. See the movement up front. Looks like Syracuse was into the neutral zone. Williams gets the call. Not much there. He spins ahead for a yard. Brought down by Micah Robinson. The Syracuse defensive line took a hit to graduation. Goggins and Sharp, Pierce Brewster all gone. Bromley, the returning leader. Robinson and Welsh stepping in. First year starting roles at the ends. Moving schools into the middle linebacker position they hope will pay big dividends as he gets more comfortable playing the position third and six bromley flushes misley out of the pocket he's forced to eat it he'll throw it away and the wagner offensive line has no answer for jay bromley unfortunately the quarterback flushes out to his right away from where his receivers are located 
had no chance to throw it back across field. So once again, the Wagner defense is going to take the field. See the numbers by Misley. More punts than passes attempted. Not a good thing for your quarterback slash punter. Gets a high kick. Fair catch at the 42 by Dezir. We'll take a break. The Syracuse D breathing fire here inside the Carrier Dome. Orange big. The Orange certainly happy to be back inside the comforts of the Carrier Dome, and so far they have really taken it to Wagner. 16-0, the Orange begin this drive at the 41-yard line, and it is Robert Morris over the right side. Morris, good yardage, first down as he is knocked out at the 37-yard line by Devon Williams. The redshirt freshman gets 22 yards. It looks like they have found a quarterback, and they have found another runner. Both these red shirts freshmen are really good looking players. Yeah, you mentioned the, the second red shirt freshman in that duo is Devontae McFarland out of Wheatley Heights, New York. Morris from Lawrenceville, Georgia. Clark on the screen loses a couple back to the 38 yard line. The pursuit tackling by Wagner's Anthony Emmanuel, Max Wassel, the two linebackers. And, and, and Jarrett. Jadoni is putting on a show tonight too. He is playing extremely well at cornerback for the Seahawks. Redshirt junior transferring from Purdue. He has made a lot of plays tonight already. Out of the pistol look, Hunt with a play fake. Has all the time in the world. Steps, heaps, west, end zone, knocked away, incomplete. D'Angelo James shadowing West, and they are giving the junior a lot of looks here in the first half. Absolutely. He, is, he plays what they call the field corner. He goes to the, the wide side of the field most of the time. I believe this is a double post. They're going to try to eat up the safety and then hit the backside post. And really what, in fact, happened is that the first post player, first post receiver did not run a good route. He ran right into the outside receiver. Omari Palmer now in at right guard for Syracuse on this third down play. Little hitch pattern caught. Spinning to the outside is Jeremiah Kobina. Knocked out of bounds at the 22. They'll pick up 16 yards and a first down. Trying to play zone coverage. They get Jerome Smith out into the flat. And they hit the wide open receiver in Kobina. Kobina with his second conch, and you see the type of roll that Hunt is on right now for the Orange, sniffing at the red zone again, just outside the 20. First down, they swing it near side, making the catch, trying to make a move with Ashton Broiled. Broiled up ahead to the 17. Here's a guy that they are desperately trying to find a role for. He is so talented, the sophomore from Rochester. They have him listed at H-back. He was a quarterback in high school, but He's just a flat out good all around athlete. Very gifted athlete. He can catch, he can run. I expect he is going to show up a number of different places today in this game after talking with their coaching staff. They want to see what other things he can do. Second down and five. They will give it to Morris again. This time Wagner does a better job of stuffing the play. Your boy Jadone lending support from the corner position. Anthony Emmanuel also in on the stop. He's got some tools. He's 6'1", 190 pounds. He'll, he'll step in to the run. Make a good form fit and tackle. Terrell Hunt, four for four on third downs. Looking at third and three inside the red zone. Again, has time. Now the pocket collapses. He's going to run, and he'll pick up the first. Hunt with his speed. Felt the late pressure and he scrambles for six. This is what's frustrating for the coaches over there on that Wagner sideline. They got everybody covered. They did a great job with coverage, but just can't get the push, can't keep the quarterback in. The quarterback can run the football well up inside the tackles. 
Syracuse will put two receivers to the top. That's Kobina and West. They hand it on a counter. Smith in for the second time today. Touchdown, Syracuse. They got it clicking now. Just a little power up inside. The right guard pulls around the centers. Block back. Mackie McPherson blocking back on the nose tackle. Nick Robinson pulling around. Leading the way for the big runner. Snap down, kick on the way by Norton, and it is good. Jerome Smith with his second rushing touchdown in this first half. Look at the block by Omari Palmer. He won the Hammer Award last week. The Orange are rolling here in the first half. Syracuse out to a 23-0 lead. 9.14 to go until halftime. Seahawks in an early hole. Brandon Peoples awaiting the Ryan Norton kick. Norton with a high end over end. This will be McKinnon from the eight. Matthias McKinnon jarred as he crossed the 20. To his credit, he keeps moving, keeps the legs churning up near the 25-yard line. Brandon Reddish was the first one on special teams to lay the initial blow. He is their third cornerback. Extremely good tackler. It's proven by that special teams encounter. So now Misley and the Seahawks down 23, an offense that has mustered just the minus one yard. You see the number minus one for total offense, the early turnover. Dom Williams, the usually reliable running back, six carries for a net yard. That's been it for number 25. And now the pass knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Josh Kirkland, the transfer from Butler Community College in Kansas, part of that national championship, NJCAA championship run by Butler Community making that deflection. He likes this game of football. He's enjoyable to watch last week in the game versus Northwestern. He didn't care about the score. He's going to play ball. Get out there and make some plays. Look at this linebacking core, and you have to appreciate this, Coach, with, with Spruill and Davis and Lynch, the three starters. Then you have Ar Arsenega and Kirkland, the two reserves. Arsenega may be the, the highest of the recruits coming in. He was a transfer, but he has a lot of skill and one of those guys that will contribute over the next two years. Lots of depth. Quarterback keeper over the left side. It's Ralph Green as we check in with Cat Whitehill. Thanks, Sean. You mentioned the trouble that Wagner is having on offense. Well, when the defense walked off the field, there was silence. Everyone walked off, no high fives. People were just drinking water. There's barely been anyone trying to encourage each other, saying, let's do this, let's get better. It's just been completely and utter silence over here on the Wagner sidelines, guys. Not a good sound. You've been a part of that, I'm sure, through your years of coaching. How do you try to change that? Well, once again, a good start on by offense. Wagner on their defense. They had a couple of three and outs. Then we had some bad things happen to them fumble some backed up in, in uh, deep in their territory fortunately a good punt but they have been basically on the field because the offense can't stay on themselves this gets discouraging the only thing you can do is keep sawing wood with the defense try to get better today the score is almost all the way out of reach anyway go out there and play Third and eight. Here comes Syracuse. The throw near side drop. That's a couple now that have been in and out of the receiver's hands. Brandon Peoples that time. The freshman. He's in there for Cody Morgan, which was really a tough blow for this Wagner program. Morgan started his career at Syracuse. He was looking forward to making their trip back here, but he was injured last week, and they don't know how long he's going to be out. But you said it right up front. Two drops now. Possible first downs if they catch that football. So there's a whole bunch of things not working. The coordination of this offense between offensive line, quarterback, receivers, not on the same page. 
The Orange set up the return, and it is a returnable one for Dezier. At the 34, he'll survey Richie Dezier all the way to the midfield to the 48. 18 yards on the return by Dezier. Special teams coverage from Trevor Loveland. You look at the two quarterbacks. Terrell Hunt entered the game late in the first quarter. He has orchestrated scoring drives of 68, 64, and 59 yards. Look at those numbers for Hunt coming off the bench. All about the quarterback at this point. Mayhem found himself a home out here in the Carrier Dome. He was welcomed by the fans, and he has paid them back with some great play. Throwing the football and running the offense. Hunt deep drop. Nobody open downfield. He'll try to improvise. Terrell Hunt, look at that. Inside the 40 to the 39. They have him listed at 6'3", 220 pounds, and we've seen him break away from some initial contact a couple of times. Once again, just watching this young man warm up earlier today. He's got some skill. Did not know he had this giddy up in his running ability, even though he scored last week on a 15-yarder against Northwestern. Second and less than a yard. They go to the ground and a gaping hole for Tyson Goley. All the way to the 15-yard line. 25-yard scamper for Prince Tyson Goley. Secondary players Williams and James, the last line of defense. This is where I saw some of the breakdowns on the Seahawks defense, reaching and grabbing, leaving their feet. They try to get the, the defensive end, Yermir Ortiz, in a lot of different positions. Tyson Goley giving ground, trying to get to the corner. Shadowed out of bounds by Najee Harris. You'll see number 10 Ortiz. He'll play defensive end. He'll play defensive tackle. He'll play middle linebacker. This is what sometimes is part of the problem with the Seahawks defense. Too many guys playing too many different positions, but they are working the, the schemes out and working the players out, finding out who can help us win. Ortiz. Leaves the lineup for Wagner. Second down play. Terrell Hunt in the orange inside the red zone. Hunt play fakes. Rolls right. Has a man open in the end zone. He missed Kobina. He'll settle underneath for Broiled, and he will get about seven yards. Oh, man. Kobina running all by himself. Look at the top of the screen in the corner here in Kobina. Wanting that football. He the cornerback's eyes are in the wrong place, but fortunately the quarterback didn't see him. They still got a very positive game. Ashton Broiled already with five catches for 16 yards for this third down play. Over the right side, barreling through defenders is Devontae McFarland. Finally brought down by James. Coach Schaefer talked about yards after contact. He has to be loving this first half. The yak on both sides of the ball. Very few on defense, not allowing those. Offensively, pick it up more and more. That's one of their targeted areas of improvement this week. And they're making it happen. Devontae McFarlane will stay in the game. Redshirt freshman out of Wheatley Heights, New York. He is the second back. He'll get the call. McFarland on a sprint to the corner. Touchdown. He's in for the orange. Devontae the McFarland. Guys. Yes. Getting the young guys some yardage here. And Terrell Hunt, the engineer. Sean, they're starting to score at will here. Too many mistakes by the Seahawk defense. Maybe losing their will a little bit. Norton adds the point after, and Devontae McFarland with his first touchdown wearing the Syracuse blue and orange. He powers his way in. Syracuse by 30.
5.34 to go in the second quarter. Syracuse behind Terrell Hunt's leadership. Jerome Smith's running, and now the redshirt freshman McFarland gets into the act. Everybody contributing here in the first half shutout. The orange steamrolling Wagner right now as Norton puts his foot into it. High, deep, end over in kick. McKinnon will let it bounce through the end zone for the touchback. Chuck Bola in his first year taking over for Scott Schaefer, who was the defensive coordinator last year. Bola and his orange defense dominating. Guy Sean Davis set the tone early with this fumble recovery. Known Chuck Bola for a long time. His daddy was a long time college and NFL coach, defensive coordinator extraordinaire. This is his second time being a coordinator, then a linebacker coach. He is very happy with today's events. You know, very much skewed by last week's performance against Northwestern, where they gave up 581 yards. They are dominating Wagner today. Bola spent the last two years linebackers coach with Cleveland, the Browns in the NFL, as we see another drop pass. He actually met Schaefer in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Their story goes back to 2005. Those two were part of the Western Michigan turnaround under Coach Cubitt, and those two became really good friends in that one year. That was the only year they worked together, but they made a, a gentleman's agreement that whoever would get ascended to the head coaching job first, they would invite to come back and be a part of their staff, and Schaefer held true to his word. It's a good story for coaches out there to honor their word. Mesley with a nifty piece of running finally tracked down on the play there by Jeremy Wilkes. Scott Schaefer describes Chuck Bola as his football brother and those two really share the same philosophy as how they want to play defense and you cannot blitz enough. They had a real problem in the secondary last week. They're trying to get it solved today. They'll have some more work to do but you know, hearing Jim Harbaugh saying some things about uh, Scott Schaefer, hardworking, enthusiastic, high character, family guy, love to hear about that. Wagner still without a first down. Luke Arsenega with the trip up as McKinnon catapults forward, shy of the 35, setting up a fourth down. Sean, I first met Scott Schaefer and his wife Missy uh, down at the Blue Gray game 2002, 100 years ago. When he was the defensive coordinator for Northern Illinois, I was very impressed. My wife and I, just fine, fine people. It's great to see him get an opportunity here at Syracuse. The right guy. The players wanted him. The athletic director wanted him. Let's see if he can get things back to where the tradition belongs at Syracuse. Misley on the punt. Takes a bounce, dangerous play by Dazier as he fields it on the hop at the 26-yard line. Yeah, you mentioned Schaefer. He, he got his start. When you look at his timeline through the years and, and his relationship with his father, Ron, who was a high school coach in Painesville, Ohio, but he spent seven years at Northern Illinois. He was part of that Joe Novak staff, and, you know, he got his start with Mallory at Indiana as a graduate assistant, moved to Northern Illinois. He really thought he had a shot to take over the head job when Novak retired, but they went a different direction. That really hurt Schaefer. He, he thought that was his opportunity. Probably a little young at that point, but what great mentors he's had. Hunt throws far side, and it is jostled free, incomplete. Good timing there by James, the quarterback, coming over, timing it out perfectly on the hit. Schaefer spent a year with Jim Harbaugh on the Stanford staff in 2007, then made the move to Michigan just one year with Rich Rodriguez, and that was the decision he, he talked about openly he wish he had back. He would have stayed with the Cardinal, just did not fit in well with Michigan as West makes another catch up ahead of the 45-yard line, 15 yards, Williams with the tackle. He got the opportunity to come down here to Syracuse, Doug Marone. Good people, solid football coach, of course, now with the Buffalo Bills. Once again, the quarterback staying alive in the pocket, stepping up instead of stepping backwards, staying alive, looking, keeping his eyes downfield and seeing the big target in West. 
fresh set of downs for the Orange from the 45. Hunt, here comes a linebacker blitz. He escapes the pocket, throws underneath, caught. That was his last option, Kobina. And again, avoiding the blitz coming up the middle. Want to remind you, coming up at halftime, we'll have a feature on Devin Walker, the uh, special story uh, dealing with Tulane. The uh, Green Wave will be Syracuse's next opponent. ACC scoreboard plus first half stats and highlights. That's all coming up at the intermission. 11 yards on the completion to Kobina. Hunt on a handoff up the middle. He'll bust ahead to the 33. This is Jerome Smith. Max Wassel in on another stop. Syracuse offensive line starting to have their way with Wagner, even though Wagner's getting shipping players in and out off that sideline. They've been out there far too long. Plenty of time inside three minutes to go in all three timeouts. Smith trying to get to the outside, running to the short side. Marker comes down. James in on the stop again for Wagner. We're just calling way too many secondary players making stops, John. Absolutely. Now at this point here, we got the tight end. I believe we got a hold. In your penalty on the tight end back at Wales. He sustained that block a little bit too long as the defensive end tried to pull away. Got a little jersey. Good call by the, the referee. These are ACC refs. I know a few of these guys. They do a good job. It's a hard game to call these days with all the speed on the field. So with the penalty, that pushes it all the way back to the 41. Empty backfield for the quarterback to look downfield. To find somebody wide open, 18. Seam pattern, Clark, first Clark. touchdown. <laughs> Versus split safety. Somebody's got to be there, more than likely a middle linebacker. They've been playing a lot of split safety coverage. Quarterback didn't take him long to see. Chris Clark wide open. See the safeties go out to the boundary. Middle linebacker caught up. That's your coverage, young man. 41 yards on the scoring strike. Terrell Hunt to Christopher Clark. Point after by Norton is good, and Syracuse ransacking the Neighbors to the east, Wagner, 37-0, orange on top as we go back to the touchdown Offside. throw and the mismatch. The defense, number 15, Linebacker line. on the speedster, That's Christopher Clark. Redshirt freshman making a redshirt freshman mistake. Clark entered today with seven catches for 89 yards. That's his first touchdown reception of the season. The former East Los Angeles junior college standout played ball there in 2011. Led them to an American Bowl victory and now in his final go around wearing the orange, he has a touchdown reception in what has turned into a massive blowout. Syracuse taking out their frustrations from the previous two weeks against Big Ten opponents on this NEC foe in Wagner. You know, Sean, looking back at Scott Schaefer defenses, they have been tight. They have been good at every level, every, every program he's been with. The one year he led Western Michigan in, in the NCAA in interceptions with 24, sacks with 46, and set a MAC record for the fewest Rushing yards, 76 yards per game. He knows defense. Yes, he does. And that was quite a turnaround for Western Michigan when, when he was teamed up with Bola there for the uh, Broncos. They were 1-10 and ten the year prior. They turned that around to 7-4, and four, and Western Michigan continued success over the next few years. Real problems last week seem like they're getting solved this week. They've got a great set of linebackers. Secondary, you know, they've got some issues back there. They're much better this week. They've got a senior in Jeremy Wilkes, number 28. 
From the 24, Wagner still looking for their first first down, and this isn't real pretty. It looked like they tried to throw the option look, and Misley is dancing around for his life, pursued by Cameron Lynch, the junior, Syracuse's returning sack leader with four from a year ago. He's an active player, great feet. You see Brendan Red, Reddish out there also participating in, in that play, turning the runner back inside. Second and 13. They will keep it up the middle with the quarterback and Welsh not fooled. Robert Welsh, who had that big opening week. He had the interception return at MetLife Stadium in front of all of his family. He grew up a New York Giant fan. That was a big thrill for him. He picked off a pass, returned it down to the one yard line to set up a Syracuse score and their loss to Penn State. He's played a lot of football for him. It's time for him to shine. He's got some tools to work with. 6'3, 256, Junior. Third and 12 for the Seahawks. They give it to Green on the jet sweep, and finally some real estate for a Wagner back. Ralph Green gets 15 yards, chased down by Spruill. And the Seahawks. Nearly 30 minutes into this football game, pick up their first first down. I want to know how Ralph Green got it here out of Tigard, Oregon. That's what I want to know. How do you, how do you arrive at Wagner? No direct flights. <laughs> I'm just guessing on that one. First and 10, the Seahawks with all three timeouts, but this might be a situation where Walt Hamline just wants to go into the locker room and lick his wounds, address the team, and Try for a fresh start in the second half. Get something positive going for their time offense. Out. Wagner. So their defense can drink a little Gatorade on the sideline. You see Wagner taking their first time out. So with 24 seconds to go, the Seahawks decide to talk it over a little bit. But I remind you, plenty more ACC football action coming up next week on ESPN3. At 12.30, it will be Pitt taking on Duke. Tulane will be here at the Carrier Dome battling Syracuse, VMI at Virginia. Bethune Cookman travels to Miami to take on the Hurricanes and another non-conference matchup, 10th ranked Florida State and Savannah State. All coming up next week on ESPN3 ACC football. Entering today, interestingly enough, it was Syracuse and Pitt, the two new additions that were the only winless teams in the conference after two weeks of football. Well, we all know what those two, these two schools add to the basketball of the ACC. But we, what we want to see is what they can do football-wise. I think Pittsburgh and Syracuse, with the new coaches they have, they're under good direction. Misley forced from the pocket, being chased by Welsh, throws underneath, incomplete. It's that same combination, Bromley the disruptor, and then Welsh and Spruill, the chasers there, forcing Misley to throw it away. And another drop ball, but I think we have a, a penalty on mm. Syracuse for a late hit out of bounds. Happened on the Syracuse sideline. foul on the defense, number 11. 15-yard penalty automatic, first down. Marquise Spruill with the late hit. So we take a look at it along the orange side. Not real bad, but oh, enough. I tell you what, that's a little touchy. Now, come on, coach. A former <laughs> linebacker, not that bad. You're being too kind there. <laughs> not that bad of a hit. It really wasn't. That's what it I meant. Was not. It I was not. He just got his fingertips on it. Wagner will take it, though. 15 seconds to go, two timeouts. Remember, they have a tremendous kicker as they set up a middle screen, maybe just trying to give David Lopez a shot. Lopez is a phenomenal weapon for Wagner through the years. Fifth year senior has a long this year of 47, so looking to pick up another 10 to 12 yards and, and give their special teamer a chance to at least give Wagner something positive to build upon. Well, they've moved the ball out across the 50. That's significant for them today. Second down and 10. Misley floats it down the middle, and it's intercepted. 
Picked off by Syracuse. Down the sideline, a couple of blockers ahead for the Orange. This is Cameron Lynch finally pushed out at the 23-yard line. And now the two teams come together in front of the Syracuse sideline. Lynch with the interception. Knowing exactly what they go, got to do. They play Tampa 2, where the middle linebacker drops all the way back to cover the deep middle. And that's a gift wrap interception. A very, very fine play. Wow, good catch as well. Second turnover in the first half by Wagner. As we go down to the sideline, Cat standing by with Scott Schaefer. Thanks, Don. Coach, you got off to a slow start, and then you put in Terrell Hunt. How happy are you with his performance? I was good. I was happy with that whole offense's performance once we got him on the field. You know, I was disappointed in the slow start. I thought we were a little inconsistent with some things. Looking at the numbers, good job on first down, both offense and defense, which we need to be in this game. We need to be that well. Uh, but for the most part, not bad. We've got to come out and finish this thing off the right way. Well, what kind of improvements do you need to see in the second half to feel like you finished the game well? I don't know. Just hope we to see us get, get better in every stage we can. Simple as that, okay? All right, thanks a lot, Coach. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Kat. Scott Schaefer, his theme throughout the preseason camp in the first couple of weeks has been hard-nosed football, yards after contact. Tyson Golan and the rest of the Orange cruising here at the break. 37-0 Syracuse. Welcome back. We are at halftime here in Syracuse, the Carrier Dome, the Seahawks of Wagner and the Orange of Syracuse. Devin Walker was a two-time state champion at Destrehan High School just outside of New Orleans. The same high school former Miami Hurricane and NFL All-Pro safety Ed Reed attended. Tulane head coach Curtis Johnson told ESPN that the two safeties were very similar players, but that Walker was actually a harder hitter than Reed. Amazing praise for a player who came so far only to have his senior season at Tulane cut short. His life changed forever on September 8, 2012. Here's Tom Rinaldi. Good morning. What you gonna eat for breakfast today? I'll try to do good today. Determination isn't always loud. It doesn't always roar. It won't always shout. For Devin Walker, determination Ready? has a different sound. I was on the Nile. I didn't believe that oh, my arms can't move, oh, my legs can't move, and that I'm on this speaking to that's on my throat. How long does it take to get dressed? Uh, about two hours from, from the bed to actually being in the chair, and being ready to actually either go or just sit up and watch TV or something. He never really learned to appreciate something until it's gone. It's the next day in the next life. Faced with the same drive he used in his last one when he came to Tulane in 2009. A cell and molecular biology major determined to play Division I football. I kind of looked him up and down and thought, oh gosh. And because uh, at that time he might have been 160 pounds. A lot of players are big and strong, but don't have that killer instinct. And Devin definitely had that. First thing is his determination. He had the chip on his shoulder from day one that, hey, I'm going to make this team, I'm going to make us better. From walk-on to starting safety, Walker not only earned a scholarship, he was named team captain for the 2012 season. My mindset on the field was that no matter what, uh, you weren't going to beat me. So I'm going to show you, basically, I'm going to show you. September 8, 2012, Tulane at Tulsa. 
a short pass at the end of the first half. I just hit the hit, and everybody go, wow. And I just didn't know who it was, and it was like, in time to say, who is it? And that does not look good. I was going to go help him up, and I just, I saw the look on his face, and I mean, I knew it was something serious. There were moments where we feared the worst. There were some times where we struggling to breathe and keeping pulse. He just didn't know. And, you know, I was praying for his life. My fear was that he would be gone. He would, uh, my son would not be with me when I finally got to him. My first instant when I woke up and I couldn't read was I had a fear of, I'm going to die on this field right now today. I'm never going to see him and my family again. So. An ambulance rushed Walker to a Tulsa hospital. Days later, he woke up. The doctors told me I had a fracture C3, C4, I'm ready to break. Basically, it said everything below your shoulders is dead. Uh, everything below my neck, really, at the beginning. They said it's dead. You know, he wasn't thinking of himself. He was thinking of what this accident caused, the trouble that it, as in his mind, he was causing trouble for everybody. That's the very first thing he said, Mom, I'm sorry. While Walker's absence loomed over Tulane's team in New Orleans, he spent the rest of the season in a rehabilitation center in Atlanta. They basically said that you're gonna have to get ready for a life in this wheelchair. And I just remember thinking the whole time, like, no, I'm not. I'm pretty wrong. I'm getting out of this wheelchair. Now, he spends three days a week in therapy. Good. Come on, Devin. All the way. The session's meticulous and difficult, as is most of every day. This semester, Devin is back on campus taking classes to earn his degree. And there's one other place he's determined to be. I made a promise that I was going to be sideline with my team, watching them beat Jackson State. Uh huh. Hey, how you like the designs? At the season opener, that's where he was, with his team, giving his message. The fact of the matter is, you know, my day is up. I'm playing football. Y'all day is still in front of y'all. Been a lot of pain, been a lot of work just for me to get to this point. That's uh, just, man, I just want y'all to go out there and just play, play like it's your last, you know, because you don't, you don't know how many you got. Pain is temporary, but victory is forever. Y'all play for that. Y'all ball out on three, ball out on three. One, two, three. As much as he can be around, I want him around us. Because what he did and what he gave up is inspiration to all of us. Devin's determination he sets the track for us all. Even though his body has, has faltered, his spirit is undefeated. My future is to regain my movement, really, to help other kids, other people who have been in my situation, who have been paralyzed. I believe that that's what I'm meant to do now. Quite a story. Devin still has hopes for attending medical school, but also has now added the possibility of adding a nonprofit organization for spinal research. And coach, I know you know the state of Louisiana well, and that's a rich area for football. I'm telling you right now, my wife and I were fortunate enough to deliver the year coaching for the Saints, and we lived in Destrehan. Those people are the greatest combination of love, caring, and passion about their people that I've ever come across. Walker and his teammates, Tulane, will take on Syracuse next week. Back with more right after this. 
Welcome back inside the Carrier Dome. Syracuse looking for their first win of the season, and right now they are on their way. A 37-0 dominant performance in the first half. As we take a look at the ACC scoreboard, Virginia Tech survives the scare. They beat East Carolina 15-10. You see Pittsburgh picking up their first win of the year. Louisiana Monroe knocks off Wake Forest. USC up big on Boston College. Georgia Tech leading Duke and Florida State up big as they start the third quarter. Kicking off later tonight, it will be Maryland and Connecticut. And I know Coach Virginia Tech getting that road win against a very good East Carolina program. Solid win for the Hokies. It's Bud Foster's defense coming through again. They are, I really going to be lights out this year on defense. They have yet to be able to get their offense on track. Paul Johnson's Georgia Tech squad, a 70-0 win against Elon. They follow that up with a conference win against Duke. Back with more from the Carrier Dome after this. Welcome back inside the Carrier Dome. Syracuse, a dominant first half of football. They lead Wagner by a score of 37 to nothing. Sean Kenny alongside John Bunning. And John, we started this broadcast with some questions that needed to be answered for Syracuse. First and foremost, who is going to move this offense forward? Will it be Drew Allen or Terrell Hunt? And I think the question has been answered. Yeah, we are talking about Yak, yards after catch. It's Yah, yards after Hunt. He has done a great job leading this offense as he's turned in a stellar performance, both throwing and running the football himself, getting out of some trouble. Hunt threw for two touchdowns in the first half, plus he scrambled for 30 yards on three carries. And then defensively, Scott Schaefer has certainly got his package rolling today. They've got to be very happy what they've done on defense. A lot of penetration, a lot of TFLs, a lot of separation off blocks, a lot of running to the football and making some plays against this, this Seahawks offense just hasn't got on track at all. You know, we talk so much about the linebacking core for Syracuse, Dyshawn Davis, Cameron Lynch really setting the tone, and then the offense took it from there. Prince Tyson goalie, a check down as he goes 23 yards for the touchdown, and then Hunt right down the middle, coach, to Christopher Clark. Absolutely, versus cover two, the split safety look, middle linebacker doesn't run it. Big touchdown play right there at the end of the half. Take a look at the offensive numbers, and Syracuse really cranked it up in that second period. 338 yards total offense. Wagner picking up their first first down with inside a minute to go in that second quarter. It was that dominant. First time they crossed the 50 was in the last minute of play. Syracuse up big. We'll have more after this. Welcome back to Syracuse halftime. The Orange on top, 37-0. Just a few moments ago, Cat Whitehill caught up with Wagner head coach, Walt Hamlin. All right, coach, what did you tell your team at halftime? I just, you know, it was pretty simple. We got to come out and try to do better this half. The first half, we didn't move the ball, put our defense in bad situations, and they came up with big plays, didn't tackle well. Basic fundamental football. We got to come out and get after it in the first half, this half, and see if we can do a little bit better. Well, the Syracuse offense really seemed to find a rhythm. How do you stop Terrell Hunt and their offense? I think you just got to make plays. He's a good football player. You know, it's a little bit of a speed factor where we uh, just didn't get on people, and we just got to play hard-nosed football. You know, that wasn't a good half of football. It's over. See if we can get some things going in the second half here. All right. Thank you so much, Coach. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Cat And John Walt told us numerous times this week in his 33 years of guiding this Wagner program, this was going to be his stiffest test. When you look at Syracuse's power, their speed, everything coming together was a, like a complete milestone for them because the Orange had lost their first two games. And unfortunately, if you're a Seahawk, it all came together for Syracuse in the first 30 minutes. And it picks up right where we left off. Special teams play there for the Orange, and that is uh, Wayne Morgan flying through with the stump. Well, when you look at these statistics, it's just uh, very, very lopsided. And of course, most of the offense for Syracuse comes in when Terrell Hunt takes the field. But great improvement in defense. Yes, it's against Wagner, but Coach Schaefer's got to be pleased. Coach Bullock got to be pleased with the way his defense has played tonight. Matt Bisley, you saw the numbers. He has just not had much time to throw. He's had three drops from his receivers. A frustrating first half 
for the redshirt junior as they go to the ground game. Dominique Williams, one of the more dominant ball carriers at the FCS level, he saw today as an opportunity. You know, a lot of these Wagner guys came in with a chip on their shoulder. These are guys that were overlooked by FBS programs, so they use that as a driving force, but there has been nowhere for Williams to go. It's been relentless up front. You know, once again, both teams are really, really going back to training camp. Wagner's two weeks away from their conference opener and homecoming against Bryant. They got to see who they are, They're trying to figure out an identity on their team. Spread formation, minimal protection. Misley going to be sacked. It's Bromley. He drugs, drags him into the end zone, but forward progress will have him probably around the two or three yard line. And Jay Bromley, the senior, has just flat out dominated the interior of the Wagner offensive line. A very powerful and skilled athlete. Bromley breaks through the double team on him to split the guard and tackle to make the play. Powerful. Six foot four, 285 pound senior. They have turned out a number of defensive and offensive linemen from the Syracuse program into the NFL. Bromley gets his second sack of the year and on third and a mile, it's a quick throw to Tyree Watkins. First time we've called his name, the Duke transfer, very similar to Allen for Syracuse, graduated from Duke and now in his postgraduate studies here with Wagner and he brings some experience to the table. I mentioned Wagner two weeks away from their conference opener and they want to get ready for that. Syracuse next week versus Tulane, then they got a bye week and then they got eight straight conference games beginning with Clemson at home. Miz lead a punt from his end zone. This will take a bounce at the 45 yard line. It takes a Syracuse hop. Touched at the 42. That is a 36 yard punt by Matt Misley and we look at the Syracuse offense 338 yards total offense Terrell Hunt led them on a scoring drive every single time 230 yards offense alone when you factor in the rushing from Hunt. He's been just about perfect so far. My guess Sean they would love to see them pilots from yards here in the third quarter and get another quarterback in there to put him on the bench and rest. Well, the reverse type motion as they go to Esteem. Look like a face mask, no marker as Esteem tight ropes down the side. They're going to say he stepped out at the 37 yard line. Grizzly Esteem, one of the freshmen who Coach Safer will be looking at contributing throughout the course of the year. He has got some speed. You can see it right there. Delray Beach, Florida. I don't remember recruiting down there. There are some. Players, it was players with speed and skill. A steam caught four balls for 51 yards last week against Northwestern. Schaefer and the coaches thought he played a little nervous the first week against Penn State, had a couple of drops, but he has settled in, found his niche against the Wildcats, and making his second catch of this football game. Third and short to bring in the, the big folks. Two tight ends, two backs. Josh Paris, Beckett Wales, the two tight ends. Clay Cleveland will be the fullback as they operate from the eye. Third and a yard. Power football for Syracuse. They give it up the middle. First down and more. Tyson Goley, the third down back, dodging his way up ahead to the 27, brought down by Greg Hilliard. Boy, you could see him make a move, free somebody. Breaks some ankles with that jump cut after he crossed the line of scrimmage. Very, very skilled runner. And of course, the big catch in the first half for a touchdown. He's a good receiver back. Third down conversion as they go to Jerome Smith over the left side. Smith moves the pile inside the 25, picks up three. Coach Scott Schaefer had some goals coming into this season, in particular this week. And how would you grade him, Coach? <laughs> I would gray him A plus. <laughs> Look at the yards after contact, which he was talking about. He's getting close to the 100 plus mark. And of course, they want that over the defense side to limit yards after the catch. 
You mentioned with Syracuse as they look at Jerome Smith, looks like a cramp maybe for Smith. Hopefully that's all. But they have so much skill at running back. You have a first-year head coach who's familiar with the program. We'll, we'll continue our thought when we come back. Injury timeout, 11.02 to go, third quarter. Syracuse pitching the shutout. thrown for a couple of touchdowns. Jerome Smith has rushed for two more, and now Syracuse has Ashton Broyle taking it out of the Wildcat for the Orange, and he's going to throw. Broyle hits Clark on the left side, a screen. Clark ducks inside the 20 and is knocked out at the 15 by Anthony Emanuel. There you go, Coach. We were talking about this kid, Broyle. you got to love it. Former quarterback sitting back in the Wildcat, you'd think, not so fast. He's going to throw a swing pass out there. What can they do with that young man when you have the quarterback hunt playing well, deploy him outside, everybody thinks it's Wildcat, and he throws a pass. you got to love him. Broiled was the 2010 New York State Class AA Player of the Year. They go to the ground with Tyson Goley. Not much. Wagner pursuing down the line well. Max Wassel, the... Former scout team player. He was on the scout team for the Seahawks the past couple of years. Now into the starting lineup. This Wagner team took such a serious hit because of graduation. They've had some big time defenders come through. CO Prime, one of the bigger names who was just recently cut by Indianapolis, but now part of the CFL with Hamilton. Going back to his roots. Second down play over the middle, incomplete, looking for the tight end. Setting up a third down. Yeah, Sean, things are so fluid with the Wagner defense. You know, we, we didn't even know who the starting outside linebacker, Greg Hilliard, who started an outside linebacker tonight, it was, wasn't was even on the two deep <laughs> all through the, the, the week until yesterday. They just are playing an awful lot of players. Kind of reminds me of my first uh, head coach with the Philadelphia Eagles, Eddie Kayad. He'd say, uh, we got one team playing, one team going, and another, another one on the way back to Philly. <laughs> Third down coming up. Hunt over to Tyson Goley, and Wagner does a nice job. Their red zone defense collapses down. Navon Williams, Keith Foster, the reserve corner, and this will set up a field goal opportunity for Ryan Norton. Could use all the practice they can get here. Missed extra point. This will be a 32 yard field goal for Norton, who's in there for the injured Ross Crotman. Norton connected from 33 earlier. Placement down by Charlie Lowe. Kick is on the way, and it is good. So Norton, two for two in the field goal department, and Syracuse pushes up the end. Orange all over Wagner, 40 to nothing early in the third. 40 to nothing, Syracuse on top as you get a good look at Walt Hamline. And 1987, Coach John Bunny was a special year for the state of New York. Take a look at this shot. 1987, your Kodak Coaches of the Year. Walt Hamline representing Wagner for their Division Three championship. And there is Mr. Dick McPherson representing Syracuse and before today's kickoff the two coaches coming together one more time outstanding people great to see coach McPherson over in the box next door to us I also saw Jim Beheim. I would I wanted to go welcome to the ACC but I got scared McPherson in that 1987 season of course for Syracuse the unbeaten year 11 0 and 1 tied Auburn in the Sugar Bowl both those coaches recognize, and now here they are. Had a chance to say hello to Coach McPherson. You talk about a fixture and, and all that he brought to Syracuse football during his tenure. You, once again, you talk about both these coaches. They are what coaching is all about. You know, back in a different world, different time, it was so important. And, of course, we got his grandson out here starting for the uh, Orange at center. Yeah, Mackie McPherson. 
who was recruited by Syracuse as a long snapper. He showed up at 238 pounds. <laughs> hey, he's done a terrific job. He's been the starter for two years, three years now. And then Coach McPherson's other grandson, Cameron, part of the Georgetown football program, who Wagner beat back in week one, 28 to 21. Hey, once again, you talk about Coach Walt Hamline, 33 years as the head coach. Last year, first playoff win in conference history. FCS Coach of the Year again. Uh, he's just a special, special human being. You look at what Wagner accomplished last season, knocking off the Patriot League champion Colgate in the FCS first round playoffs and then giving Eastern Washington all they could handle on the road in the quarterfinal round, losing that game 29-19. That could have been a different situation had Wagner not settled for four David Lopez field goals. Got a different Williams. quarterback in there now. For Wagner, Chris Andrews. Time to see him. We were told in the conference call he might see three quarterbacks today. And they got a fourth one. They're trying to get ready. Andrews is the best runner of the trio when you look at Misley, the starter, and Kramer Berg, the other quarterback you're alluding to, as Reddish comes on a corner blitz. Pass tipped up in the air, nearly intercepted. Welsh. Had his radar locked on Andrews. He got the hand on it. Reddish in the vicinity of an easy pick along with Aaron Sega. Very intense rush. You just can't turn that Michael Robinson loose like that. Looks like they turned the protection to Micah, but the offensive tackle didn't get out there. That's why he was so successful getting to block the pass. Forty two yard punt by Matt Misley. You look right here two deep safety split safety sending with five wide one right down the post area. Linebacker's got to climb in a hurry, doesn't get it done. You look back here, late in the half, the Syracuse going to a split safety type look. Linebacker dropping back, gets the big pick. Very well schooled this week. They're on their way back to playing great defense in Syracuse. Chuck Bulla, the defensive coordinator, Scott Schaefer working hand in hand. And that's the thing you have to keep in mind if you're a Syracuse fan first year coach first year offensive coordinator we haven't talked much about George McDonald in this broadcast but he's in his first year you mentioned Bola first year quarterback situation trying to fill in for Ryan Nassib a brand new conference it's a lot it's a lot on the plate and trying to figure out but here's one of these Richard freshman on the loose holy smokes he ran over 100 yards just only two yards backwards. East to west. Right Holy there. smokes. Was this a long run? You see the jet sweep action. We're going about 40, 40 yards, 30 yards there. Now we're going about 35 yards back. It's about a 75 yard run to pick up minus two. That's a rewarding <laughs> tackle for a linebacker, Hilliard, who chased him all the way east and then came back west. Third down, Hunt's gonna throw, look at the time. Home run ball, looking for West, caught! And it's another Syracuse touchdown, Jared West. Throw and 64 catch. yards for the touchdown. Sean, just a great throw and catch. What, what timing between those two. I think Syracuse has found their quarterback today. They found the engineer, there's the bell whistle. Plucks it from the air over top of the shorter D'Angelo James at six foot two and a half versus five foot ten. Ryan Norton adds the point after Terrell Hunt with his third touchdown pass of the night. And if you're Tolane, you better get ready for number 10. Hunt hooking up with West. Second time they've connected. 
Syracuse in a blowout. Terrell Hunt has thrown his third touchdown of this football game. 65 yards to junior Jared West. What a night for West catching the football. Five catches for 147 yards. Doubling his total through the first two weeks. He had just five catches in the losses to Northwestern and Penn State, but a big game here against the Wagner D as McKinnon Feels the kickoff from the goal line. McKinnon popped as he crossed the 20 up ahead to the 22-yard line. Let's talk about that focus on the Syracuse sideline with Cat Whitehill. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, I was listening to assistant head coach Tim Dows talk about how they need to keep their focus, how it's so important for them to play the way the game is supposed to be played, and they still have work to cash in on. Even in a game that's 47-0, they want to make sure that they keep their focus for the whole game and finish this off well. Back to you guys. Assignment football, hard-nosed football coming from the first-year coach. Wagner opens up with Chris Andrews out there for his second series. Andrews redirecting his tailback on this first down play, and he will keep it over the right side. This is what Andrews does so well. He'll push past the 30, tripped up at the 32 by Dyshawn Davis. Nice positive play on the read. Quarterback misdirect run. Going back to Cat's point, John, you look at how Syracuse is executed really in every single facet of this football game. No question. The quarterback change has really sparked some life into the offense. Defense has been playing lights out. Here's the southpaw, Andrews running for his life, and another drop pass. Pretty good throw there as he had pressure. He was trying to hit Brandon Peoples, but Peoples was getting hit by Tyshawn Davis again. He's got pressure. This is not easy to throw this ball on the run like that. Good defense by uh, Davis there, Deshaun Davis. Got his hand in between the receiver's hands. That usually doesn't work for the receiver catching the ball. Davis, the preseason all ACC, not disappointing today as a fumble recovery, a number of stops from his linebacker position. Andrews, little throw read option and he throws it and it's a drop pass deflected and intercepted by Eskridge the strong safety playing with a cast on his right hand Eskridge is able to pick it off and it's another Syracuse takeaway faking the read going out like he's option and he has a third option to throw fakes outside to the perimeter Throws inside wide open. Another drop. Reception right there. You saw that ball go through the hands of Fred Locklery. That's five or six passes that should have been caught by Wagner receivers. And now Drew Allen back in there at quarterback for the Orange. Wanted the screen. They set it up near side instead. This is McFarland with McPherson out of front blocking. And McFarland tripped up at the 18-yard line. 17 yards and a perfectly designed screen. I think this is a real smart play by Scott Schaefer putting the quarterback back in. He got to see a lot of Hunt today do a lot of good things. But you got to keep that second quarterback alive. I think it's really smart, very brilliant to do this. George Morris the, the third offense. has checked in now as the tailback and it will be Morris the third getting the call breaks a tackle inside the 10 he powers his way down to the seven yard line there are so many advantages of playing a bowl game and these two freshman backs McFarland and Morris made the most of their extra practices as the rest of the team was getting ready to pound West Virginia in the pinstripe bowl Gullies. a season ago. You've got Prince Tyson Gully, he's a senior. You've got Jerome Smith, who's a junior. These two guys are special. They look very much alike, both about six foot, both about 100, uh, 200 pounds. Both redshirt freshmen, it's hard to believe. First and goal, they will give it to Morris over the right side. He is twisted down inside the five, brought down by Yamir Ortiz. As we take a look at the two Syracuse quarterbacks today in the 
Job done by Hunt. Remember, Allen started. He went the first three series, a couple of three and outs, and a field goal taking advantage of a short field. And then a lightning bolt struck the Carrier Dome and Terrell Hunt. Yeah, I think it's all about this sophomore quarterback, Terrell Hunt, being at the controls from here on out. But this is good to get some work for, I think, the new backup at Syracuse. Allen looking toward the end zone. Back of the end zone. Touchdown. Christopher Clark with his second touchdown on the day. Back of the end zone throw over top of the coverage. Drew Allen finding Clark in the back of the end zone and I wouldn't be surprised to see if they take a look upstairs to make sure Clark got a foot down as we take one more look. Drew Allen with the time in the pocket to throw. The flat receiver in the tight end and then the deep receiver by the wide out. The corner starts to bite up allows the opening to the wide receiver in the back of the end zone. That's how that works. See the throw by Allen. Secondary losing track of Christopher Clark. Who judging by all indications should have his second touchdown of the day. Take another look from this back view. Yeah, he's in, coach. It's, it's gonna, this one's going to hold. And touchdown. As expected, the touchdown will stand. So Drew Allen with a second touchdown pass of the season. And something for the Oklahoma transfer to feel pretty good about. It's nice to have happy faces in that meeting room on Sunday and Monday, believe me. Everybody's got to be pretty happy about how they're performing today. Because you're in the high performance business. Norton, who is making his debut as the field goal kicker, is going to feel like a veteran after today. His leg's going to be tired tomorrow morning. 54 0 Syracuse. A new year. Full of challenges, the life of a football coach. Last year, nine consecutive victories for Walt Hamlin in this Wagner program. Started the year 0-3, reeled off nine straight, including the playoff opener. They lose 27 seniors off that team a year ago. And remember, the Northeast Conference, a little bit different from the rest of the FCS and their scholarship allotments. They're capped off at 40. Very different from others. Take a look at the upcoming exclusive ESPN3 games. Next Saturday, we'll be in Charlottesville, Virginia, taking on VMI. Murray State travels to Bowling Green. Cincinnati pays a visit to Miami of Ohio, Memphis, and Arkansas State. 10th ranked Florida State battling Bethune Cookman while Louisiana Lafayette taking on accurate. Interesting matchup. 6 o'clock Eastern next week, exclusive college football on ESPN3. Norton with the kick, McKinnon on the return. Slips free, gets a little breathing room across the 30, up ahead to the 31-yard line. Nice return by Matthias McKinnon, tripped up by McFarland. But that is a lot of rebuilding. Now, your typical FCS program has a cap of 63 scholarships. The Northeast Conference is at 40. You can stop and start those scholarships. So they thought the coaches for Wagner guesstimated around that 56, 58 scholarship plateau for this program coming into the season. But 27 seniors, that is a ton. That's a lot of players leaving your program. To That's reproduce. a lot of experience off the field. Dominique Williams, who has had a quiet day, pushes forward for three. Ron Thompson, the backup defensive end, in on the stop. The one thing we have not seen again 
by the Wagner offense. Of course, it's been very a difficult road for them is to get the tight ends involved. OC Thomasella said, hey, we got to get the tight ends a little bit more involved. I haven't seen them throw a ball to them yet. Had several drops, Sean, by wide receivers and running backs. Chris Andrews on for his third series. The running quarterback, the redshirt freshman, fires toward the side. Too tall, had a couple of guys open. He was looking for your tight end. Watts was open, but he overshot him. Andrews redshirted last year. Prepped a year at Valley Forge Military Academy. Graduated from St. Joseph's Regional High School. In this game, and, and when you get to this section of the country, you see a lot of athletes take advantage of the academies, or those prep schools. The Milford Prep Schools, Bill Chapwick, Chappy as we call him, turned out a lot of players both for Syracuse and for Wagner. Andrews guns it over the middle through the hands of Williams, incomplete, setting up a fourth down. And it's another three and out for Wagner. The FCS has had their moments here in 2013, sneaking up on the larger FBS schools, but not the case today. This has been a flat out dominant performance turned in by Syracuse. Misley with a high kick angled toward the near side. It will go out of bounds. Let's see where they mark it. Side judge still coming up. They're going to mark it at the 43 yard line. 24 yard pump by Misley. And we'll get to see Drew Allen come back out after throwing the touchdown to Clark, taking advantage of a short field, their last possession. First down, it will be Allen carrying out the option. That's not his cup of tea, not his strength. He's a big gun slinging quarterback from the state of Texas. Minimal gain there, setting up a second down. San Antonio, Texas native. Spent time backing up Landry Jones and Sam Bradford. That's a pretty good duo to back up. Bradford, the Heisman Trophy winner. Jones with just 123 touchdown passes in his career at Oklahoma. Once again, he doesn't even get here until summer camp. Second down, screen pass to Broyle. Makes one defender miss. Turns on his Jets and will pick up the first down. Escorted out by Najee Harris, the athletic linebacker for Wagner, but it looks like Broyle should have enough for the first down. Yeah. The Seahawks get it in their fourth safety. Anabwale Godwin, number 41, enters the game. Misses a tackle. A little bit out of control. We've got some linebackers out there I have not seen yet on the field. They're playing a lot of players. Same play. Wagner. They flip sides. There goes Broyle. 13 more to the 35. Again, Harris tracking him down. In the running backs, the red shirt freshman alternating plays coming in and out. Nick Farley, Morris playing a lot of football today. Empty backfield for Drew Allen. Trip set to the near side. Allen, straight drop, has time, fires toward the sideline, and a nice adjustment is made by Kobina. He holds it in at the 15, 19 yard hookup on a behind back shoulder type throw. Runs everybody off. He sees the one corner that's playing all by himself away from most of the coverage and throws the back shoulder throw. Smart play. Allen played in 12 games while in Norman, 18 of 30 for 160 yards as a backup. Morris trying to get to the outside, makes a cut. Snow drives ahead up to the 11-yard line. Harris, who's been a busy man, makes yet another stop. 
Take a look at Allen's numbers today. Eight of 11, not bad, 61 yards, but the first two games, six interceptions, that's an FBS high. A couple of passes last week were deflected, and that's what really had the Syracuse coaches so perplexed. Here he is, a, a great big guy at 6'5", 6'6", and a number of passes were getting tipped at the line of scrimmage. As I said earlier, Sean, I think he telegraphs his throw. He's looking towards the receiver way too soon, not comfortable yet being able to look off receivers and throw back to somebody else. And that's a result of five years four years I should say uh, you know out of Oklahoma not playing much third down personnel checking in Syracuse a little confused Morris the freshman will leave the lineup and I think the orange might be forced to burn a timeout and going back to what we said Syracuse. before Sean new quarterback new OC everything's new all starting with training camp in 2013 for this guy Scott Schaefer has certainly put in his time, his dues, in earning this job, taking over for Doug Marone, who went off to the NFL, now the coach with Buffalo. And the thing about Marone, he was 25 and 25 in his four years with Syracuse, but he finished on top. Big East champions last year in a complete ramsacking of West Virginia in the snow in the bowl game last year. Strong finish. Yeah, pinstripe bowl. Champions in 10 and 12, Doug Marone, his offensive coordinator, son of Paul Hackett, who worked for us with Kansas City. His son Nathaniel is now the OC at Buffalo. That's right. Was my ball boy when I was the linebacker coach at Kansas City. Yeah. I'm not sure what that says. I might be saying I'm it really old. It says you are really young, <laughs> coach. Uh, you gotta love it. Love this game. Love the opportunities that are presented. Nathaniel Hackett, I love you. You're a great young man and going to do a great job with the Buffalo Bills. Third down, and here comes the pressure, and Wagner gets their first sack of the day. The Seahawks dialing up the blitz, and coming through that time was Stefan Fontober. Allen never had a chance. Loss of seven back to the 17. Another opportunity for Ryan Norton. He's been their kickoff guy. They'll let the third quarter clock wind down. So Syracuse, who entered today 0-2, making amends in a big way. Syracuse behind the Right arm and the ferocious defense pitching the shutout. Terrell Hunt, three touchdowns. This last one to Jared West. Orange all over the Seahawks in this New York State bunch. Syracuse on top of Wagner, 54-0. Ryan Norton looking for his third field goal of the evening. This will be a 35-yard attempt. He is connected from 32 and 33. Placement is down. It's a low kick, and this one is no good. James with the pressure. We'll take another look to see if he got a hand on it. Low trajectory off the right foot of Norton. I don't think he did. I think it was just a missed shot there by Norton. Sean, he just caught that on the instep. Didn't really follow through. Sometimes those kickers have a tendency to watch the rush. Sometimes like quarterbacks do. You got to follow through. Not much has went wrong for Syracuse today. This field goal there by Norton, and now the Wagner offense from the 20-yard line. Andrews, the left-hander, will go to work. He will keep it, and he has nowhere to go. Swallowed up by Arsenega. Loss of five or six. Arsenega started his career with Nevada. Did not work out there. Transferred into Sierra College, and now he's found a home wearing the orange. Stayed at home to put the quarterback down hard. Arsenega left after just a week of fall camp with the Wolfpack. Suffered a concussion. 
misunderstanding, found a home at Sierra where he excelled. He was a Valley All-Conference first team performer last year. And again, just providing more depth at that linebacker position. Bad snap, penalty marker down. Raymond, the big nose guard, might have been in the neutral zone for Syracuse. We'll wait and see. Andrews eats the loss, but let's wait and see what the marker is. Offside on yep. the defense. Good call, Sean. Five yard penalty, second down. So we will replay second down. John Raymond, six foot five, 325 pounder, the transfer from Iowa, played his first game for Syracuse against Penn State, and he's one of those guys with that size. Fits the Scott Schaefer mold, what Chuck Bola wants to accomplish. After the penalty, second down give over the left side, nets three, maybe four. Dominique Williams with the carry. Isaiah Johnson, the backup in with the stop. Getting a lot of backup players some reps out here right now. Awfully good in a long season. And once again, they'll open up in about three weeks against eight ACC opponents, beginning with Clemson. Johnson, Thompson, the two reserve ins for Syracuse. Jones and Raymond, the down tackles. Wagner, a dismal one for 10 on third downs. Andrews floats near side, just beyond the outstretched arms of Ralph Green. Incomplete. And Wagner, with only three first downs in this football game, forced a punt. Got him open, just can't connect. Red shirt freshman. Brisley Esteem awaiting the kick. Misley gets a high, deep kick away. Esteem backs off as it takes a Wagner bounce inside the 30. Down to the 28-yard line. So Syracuse will have the football when we come back. Orange on top of Wagner, 54-0. Syracuse on top of Wagner as they will send their third quarterback out onto the field getting some work and it is the senior Charlie Loeb, six foot four, 220 pounds out of Hollis, New Hampshire. He is the holder for Ross Crotman on field goals and extra points today for Ryan Norton and now he gets a chance to get some reps in there in his final go around at Syracuse. And Loeb through the years has seen limited action at quarterback, played a couple of games back in 2010. It's Washington and Colgate. Four for six in his career for 49 yards. McFarland, who has a touchdown in today's game, barrels over the right side, close to a first down. Keith Foster driving him out of bounds. Important to note, Sean, that it was Loeb along with McPherson that went to the athletic director and said, hey, we want Scott Schaefer as our head coach. It's great when senior leaders step up like that. I, you know, it's not a player's decision, but when they have a relationship, particularly guys that are on the offensive side with the defensive coordinator, that's saying something about how this coordinator, defensive coordinator Scott Schaefer, had an effect on the entire Ball football start. team. Offense, number 57, five-yard penalty, third down. Yeah, that's a good point, John. Loeb and McPherson rallied all the, the Syracuse players. They all emailed or texted Syracuse Athletic Director Daryl Gross that they wanted Schaefer to be the guy. If there was a voice coming from the team, they wanted to make it crystal clear that they wanted Scott Schaefer to be the man, and Daryl Gross listened. <laughs> I think a very, very good choice, very deserved Low misfires, a little bit high on the slant pattern. He was looking for a steam, and it'll set up a fourth down for Syracuse. And the defense gets to go off. You know, this defense, led by defense coordinator Malik Hall last year, led the Northeast Conference in scoring defense, total defense, pass defense efficiency, and were third in run defense. So he didn't lose his mind on how to coach football. Just a lot of players not out there. Seven starters gone. Only the third punt today for Riley Dixon. Towering high kick. Fair catch at the 36-yard line. All 
Dr. Daryl Gross, athletic director at Syracuse, and what a job he has done, this orange football program. And I believe that's Floyd Little yeah. sitting right, right next to him. A special player here at Syracuse, one of number one of a number that wore number 44, and a great player for the Denver Broncos. Well, you talk about a force. Play fake by Andrews, left-hander throws underneath and hits his tight end up near midfield. Here we go. Pass to the tight end. Pat Murphy with the reception. And Floyd Little knows a thing or two about power football, oh. contact football. I got to play against him in his last game at home in Denver in 1975. Phenomenal football player. Williams showing some of his ability, twisting his way up near the 43 yard line. Hey, look at some of the greats who have went through the Syracuse program. They're going to be honoring two quarterbacks a little bit later this year. Don McPherson and Donovan McNabb will become the third and fourth jerseys to be retired at Syracuse. Take a look at the other two that are hanging from the rafters. Holy smokes, those two <laughs> players are phenomenal Hall of Famers. John Mackey just recently passed away. And Larry Zonka is still going strong. Hard to get those two guys down. I mean, that's what a tight end looked and played like back then. And you know what? Not that much different now. Special, special guy, John Mackey. The John Mackey Award presented annually to the nation's top tight end, Beckett Wales, on that candidate list this year, the tight end for Syracuse. McPherson's number nine will be retired October 5th in the matchup against Clemson, which happens to be the ACC opener for the Orange. Williams finding a rare seam, breaks into the daylight up to the 27-yard line. Williams with good yardage setting up a first down. Donovan McNabb, number five, will be retired November 2nd when they take on Wake Forest. Three straight. Donovan McNabb, 77 touchdown passes in his career. Tops on the Syracuse charts. Another drop. McPherson, part of that unbeaten Syracuse team that tied Auburn in the bowl. We just flashed up that graphic. Dominic Williams averaging 2.2 today versus a 4.8 average coming into the game. Second down play coming up 929 to go Syracuse led nine nothing at the end of the first quarter and then Terrell Hunt made his insertion into the lineup and that's when things really changed. Andrews is going to try to sprint there as he runs out of real estate shadowed out of bounds. He was chased the entire way by Isaiah Johnson setting up a third down. Isaiah Johnson another freshman out there on the field. Looking back at my notes from a game I did back here in 2011, they played 15 true freshmen in 2010, 10 true freshmen in 2011, just five true freshmen last year. So perhaps Syracuse stays on schedule here with these older players mixing in some of the redshirt freshmen from last year. They might have to get something going. Third down and five. They bring the pressure. Williams runs right by it, and this will be close. Looks like he'll be about a half a yard shy. Luke Arsenega once again in on the stop, and this will be about a half a yard away. Fourth and less than one. Just think this. Defense gave up 581 yards last week to Northwestern. Not very many had zero turnovers last week. Wagner on fourth down, and I don't think he got there. Josh Kirkland was the first one to deliver the blow, and the orange defense shines one more time. 
And a frustrated Dominique Williams heads to the sideline, even more frustrating for Walt Hamlin. Wow, what a performance by the Orange defense. Wagner entered today, 35 points per game through the first two. 360 yards of offense. Today, nothing. Just could not get anything established offensively. 78 total yards for the Seahawks in this one. Inside eight minutes to go, second down, Loeb on the read, gives it to McFarland, spins away from the first wave, is brought down by Ortiz. McFarland gets up to the 23-yard line. You know, we mentioned how Charlie Loeb was instrumental in, in helping rally support for Schaefer. Really did not have to rally it. The team was already behind him, but he kind of orchestrated, you know, letting the officials know this is the guy they wanted. But he was also... The one who sat down with Terrell Hunt once Drew Allen arrived and, and just told him, hey, be patient, wait your turn. You know, here's a senior quarterback in Loeb who's been sitting on the bench, backing up Ryan Nassib, and he, he kind of delivered a, an inspirational talk to Hunt, just telling him to, you know, bite your tongue, wait your time, an opportunity will present itself. And it certainly has today. And he took full advantage of it. A steam into the clear, tripped up, a touchdown saving tackle made by Najee Harris. As we take a look at what Syracuse has coming up on the horizon, one more tune-up before the ACC kicks into high gear. Tulane will be in town next weekend, and then they get number three Clemson here on October 5th, and what will be a real test for the Orange. Road trips to Raleigh and Atlanta. Wake Forest comes calling, then to Maryland. November 16th at number 10, Florida State. So, a couple of difficult road tests in front of the Syracuse team. After the penalty, they go to Morris. He bangs his way up near the 35. Well, he has some feet. They accelerate on contact, he drags tacklers with them like the way these two guys play. I know we watched, guys. we watched a lot of film of Syracuse this week and today watching them against this Wagner defense. The question coming in, not just a quarterback, but what was their identity going to be, you know? And I think that has become a little bit clearer today. And as a coach watching this, how would you classify Coach McDonald and this identity that they want to run offensively. Well, they they have an offense that's clearly based on what the quarterback sees at the line of scrimmage. He is going to have three or four different options to run the uh, the football, to pull the football and run some type of read option, or throw the football because he sees the defense deployed in such a manner that he could throw it right off the bat, right off the snap. So that the, the offensive linemen know it's run pass option almost on every single play. McDonald talked about the different types of receivers that he has now at Syracuse compared to his previous two years at Miami where he was the receiver coach. And we asked him, you know, what ideally would be the typical receiver to fit in your system? And he wants those guys that can get free in open space. You know, the screens, the swing passes. That's going to be his recruiting focus as they move forward. Syracuse in a blowout of Wagner late in the fourth quarter. Welcome back to Syracuse. 5.19 to go in the fourth quarter. The Orange all over Wagner. 54-0 and the third quarterback to take the field for the Seahawks out there in Kramer Berg. Berg, the senior, 6'3", 210-pounder out of Plymouth, Minnesota. Played four games last year. Threw for 58 yards in relief, 7 of 14. He enrolled at Wagner in January of 2012. Arrived in Stanton Island through the Rochester Community Technical School route. And you talk about a season. 28 touchdowns, three interceptions, 
Quarterback efficiency of 162 as he threw for over 2,300 yards. That's, That's video game bad. type numbers. <laughs> yeah, it is. And off over the right side. Not much there as we take a look at some of the scores across the country. The big one, the rematch. Alabama and Texas A&M and Johnny Menzel and company making that thing a little bit interesting. It was 42-21 at one point. The Aggies have rattled off 14 straight. Oregon rolls for the second straight week. They steamroll Virginia last week. Today they hammer Tennessee. Stanford survives Army. Louisville on top of Kentucky. And look at Michigan, number 11 in the country. They survive a square from Akron, 28-24. Big surprise there, Sean. The Mid-American Conference, Northern Illinois last year showed just how good they can be. And anytime you play a MAC opponent, you better buckle it up. That conference just continues to get stronger and stronger. Wide open football. Kramer Berg hitting his first pass, but not enough for the first down, so Wagner will send out the punting unit. You know, Sean, this is my fourth time at the Carrier Dome. Played a preseason game here against the Saints. Took the North Carolina Tar Heels here in 2002 and beat the Orange 30 to 22. Had three, three field goals of over 50 yards. Injured Orange is Christopher Clark, who has had a big day. He's caught a couple of touchdown passes. So they that will attend to him. Is a severe blow. Hopefully it's not serious. This receiving core with West, who has over 160 yards receiving today. Christopher Clark with a couple of catches. Brisley Esteem, three grabs. Ashton Broiled, seven receptions. So, you know, we saw the guys make contributions. Jeremiah Kobina, it's a, a fairly deep rotation of receivers. With a He's lot of young talent. We're, we're seeing him up and on his feet. Good to see. Esteem awaiting the kick. Misley on the punt for the 11th time today. Trying to keep it away from Esteem. Takes a good bounce for the Seahawks inside the 25. Down to the 21 yard line. 3.30 to go in this one. Syracuse about to give Scott Schaefer his first victory, guiding the Orange. The Orange will have the football at the 21 yard line. Charlie Loeb in at quarterback. Syracuse entering today 0 and 2, a 23 17 loss to Penn State, and then a 48 27 setback last week to Northwestern that. You know, Coach Schaefer described simply as ugly. They were just destroyed in every phase of the game, but a nice bounce back performance today, taking care of business, defeating an opponent soundly that they should. The stakes last week, a lot of positives from this game today. I'm sure they'll find some things wrong. They all, we, we coaches always do, but found, I think, themselves a quarterback. That last carry was Adonis Amin Moore, a junior who was a touchdown machine last year, their goal line back. Making the transition to fullback this year. Loeb double clutches, now throws and hits the tight end, Kendall Moore. Here's a kid that Syracuse fans will hear a lot of over the next four years. Moore, the freshman from Chicago. I think he's really special. Big target, physical. Saw him blocking last week against Northwestern. Saw him catch three balls, one touchdown last week versus Northwestern. That's a true freshman. That's special. Caught a 16-yard touchdown pass in front of a, a good number of family and friends in nearby Evanston. Good hole over the right side opening up near the 49-yard line. Goes Greg Tobias. Syracuse team up front, returning three starters on the offensive line, led by Mackie McPherson, Rob Trudeau, a returning starter, Sean Hickey, who has fought injuries his entire career, one of the more powerful linemen in the conference as far as sheer strength goes.
lost a couple of big guys up front. The biggest name, Justin Pugh, who's now a starter for the New York Giants. First round pick, started at right tackle for New York. Last week's opener against Dallas. And we should also mention that, you know, new head coach, new OC, new offensive line coach, Pat Perlis. Son of uh, George Perlis, the great head coach at Michigan State. Amin Moore gets the call. Nice move as he cuts to the left. Amin Moore to the 30. He'll get 12 yards and a first down. Adonis Amin Moore had a couple of thoughts during the offseason of possibly looking at a different school. He knew that this backfield was getting loaded. He was their goal line specialist a year ago. He decided to stay here with Syracuse under the new system of George McDonald. They Asked him to move to fullback, share that role with Clay Cleveland and getting some late carries here in this one. As Tobias has hit hard as he crosses the 30. As a matter of fact, uh, Sean, this whole offensive staff besides Rob Moore is all new to this group. There's Coach Schaefer just got the Gatorade bath. Congratulations, Coach. <laughs> You see the big smile on Scott Schaefer. It's got to feel good. I don't care what the score is and how we won. It's a win. First win as a head coach. He talked about entering the coaching profession because of his relationship with his father as he gets the Gatorade shower. His father, Ron, Scott was emotional during his introductory news conference. He knew his father would enjoy this moment. And I know his father is smiling at that Gatorade shower right there. Absolutely. Long time coming. Yes, indeed. The two coaches come together. Syracuse pitches the shutout. 54-0. They defeat Wagner. Back with closing comments after this. Scott Schaefer leaving the Carrier Dome with his first victory as the Orange head coach. The largest margin of victory since the 2000 year when Syracuse put a beating on Buffalo. Final score 54 0. Syracuse outgains Wagner today 595 to 87. So that's the story from the Carrier Dome for John Bunning and Cat Whitehill. I'm Sean Kenny saying so long from Syracuse. Where once again the final score is 54-0. To watch this game on replay as well as other games in our family of ESPN networks, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.